the most important thing that I see all the time is there's no... Hey, how are you guys? It is Harrison Barron from Growth Generators. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five of the easiest and most simple mistakes that most beginners make when they're starting a website. Now, I'm gonna dive right into it. Number one, first and foremost, is bad pictures. Now, everyone uses stock imagery on their website. I totally get it. When I first started out, I did the exact same thing. But there's a lot of mistakes that I made. I actually have a video going through and reviewing my first website I ever built for my business, and it was awful. There is a lot of people that don't invest the time, the energy, and even the money to getting good pictures. Now, there are websites like Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels, which have royalty-free images, and you can find some fantastic images on those websites. However, most people don't invest in high-quality images of themselves or their businesses, and that is the first and biggest mistake I always see it as the easiest way to figure out if a company is brand new or they've been around for a while. And if you're selling yourself, it is really important to have a high quality headshot. So what I always recommend is go on a local mom's group, find a college student, or heck, even hire a professional photographer in your area, spend a few hundred dollars and get some high quality images. They will transform the way your website looks. And honestly, more the more people that see it, the better off it's going to do. It is a great way to look professional, to show people what you offer and how you offer it. And it'll probably prevent you from having to update your website again in a year or two because it looks outdated again. Get those high quality images. It is worth the investment, I promise you, every single time. Number two, when most people start a website, it doesn't matter what it is, they have no target audience regularly i've dealt with people that come up to me and say hey i want to be the next amazon that's fantastic what products are you selling they have no idea and they just start building a conglomerate of tons of products that quite honestly they've never tested they suck and they don't have any audience to reach they need to niche down and focus on one specific audience and branch out from there for example on my house currently i'm looking for a garage door a very specific kind of garage door as it stands because I have a smaller dimension garage door. Either a website has a lot of information and I feel very comfortable and they tell me how they're gonna fix it, the garage door styles they offer and how they service them versus a newer website where they just say, we service and install brand new garage doors, reach out to us for a quote. I see it all the time. Now I'm not hating on both websites, but one knows their market and knows that, hey, we have people that are looking for very specific types of garage doors, servicing of those garage doors, automatic openers, the springs on them. And then there's other companies out there that don't take the time to tell me as a customer what I might be getting. And it's very nerve wracking for a customer to say, I hope that they're going to install the right thing. Do yourself a favor, paint your ideal picture. If you're a doctor, paint who your ideal client is. If you're a plastic surgeon, hey, these are the kinds of surgeries we do. These are the kinds of people that we help. This is where we're located. This is typically where people come to visit us to come into our service or our shop to get serviced. All of these things matter from a consumer experience. Don't be something for everyone. Be the, the something for a one type of person, and I promise you, you are going to do much better. I'll give you one more example because those might not click with everybody. If you are a tree company, right? Arborist, you're taking down trees. You wanna target people that have trees on their land. You're not gonna go out into the middle of the desert and try to sell tree services. You wanna go into densely wooded populations or areas where you know that trees could fall on somebody's house and you wanna market and target those people. That is the major difference and that's what's gonna help you succeed. Number three, kinda goes in line with number two and one, which is thin content. On a website, you need to tell people what you offer, how you offer it, and what you do. Most new websites do not put nearly enough information on their website, and it causes them to fall flat completely. There's just not enough information on there. If you offer a certain type of service, maybe it is a computer service. Tell people exactly what you do and who you work with, what kind of systems you put in, how, what, how the project goes, right? Who you're, a, who you're a provider of, whether it's Dell, HP, Lenovo, whomever it may be, maybe even who you buy from, how you service systems. Do you work on grades? Do you work on NASs? Do you work on 
These are all technical terms, but do you build custom computers for maybe AutoCAD or video editing? All of these things are super important when somebody is looking to buy a product or service from your company. If you just say, I'm a computer company and I'm gonna service your computers and help you keep your business running, that's way less confidence inspiring than somebody that says, hey, we're gonna make sure that your servers run correctly, your switches are set up, your wireless access points are easily accessible and you have a private network for just your computers on there and a public network for guests to access, as well as we build custom computers for video editing, AutoCAD, maybe even a, a mail server. All of these different things are things that business owners or other people are looking for. So do yourself a favor, fill out your website, ask your friends, hey, look at my website, not does it look good because your friends don't want to lie to you. Ask them, what services do I provide? How do I provide those services? And if they can't answer those questions based on looking on your website, you probably need to beef it up a little bit. And trust me, I'm not saying that because I want you to do more work. It will make you more money. Nine times out of 10, this makes the most difference when you're getting found online. Number four, no reason to contact. A lot of websites have a contact form and that's it. They just say first name, last name, email address, and message. Use your contact form as the first barrier to entry to start getting information. What kind of services do they want? Do they have a budget for this? When are they looking to get this done? Is it next week? Is it next month? Is it next year? What phase of research are they in? Are they looking for a quote? Are they looking to start tomorrow and buy? Are they just doing their research currently? These are all huge, important questions that your website can ask somebody and people that are genuinely interested in buying from you are gonna take the 30 seconds to a minute to fill out that form and that's gonna help a salesperson close more deals and it's gonna help you as a buyer figure out where you're at. It's the first question, it's, am I really ready to commit to buying next week or starting next week? Or am I just kind of doing research and I'm not ready to take the next steps forward, right? Maybe you want more information. Well, now the salesperson can come in and actually go provide that information instead of doing a high pressure sale because he thinks you're ready to buy tomorrow. Hugely, hugely important. Give people a reason to contact and ask them questions. Ask those first barrier to entry questions. Even colleges have this. If you go to a new college, they usually have you take those early assessments that figures out if you need like a remediation class or to redo a class. It's normal. Go ask those questions and figure out and put the content in there that says, hey, if this is something that you're looking for, this is what we provide. Reach out to us and contact us, right? Maybe it's a certain type of garage door. Maybe it is a certain type of contractor. Maybe it's a certain type of plumber, whatever it may be. Ask those questions. I promise you, you're going to end up closing more sales and you're going to get way more qualified leads. And somebody that doesn't fill it out, that's fantastic. That means that they're not ready for any of those things and they're not ready to commit to the next step. So don't think you're turning away business. It's a huge misconception. And number five, the most important thing that I see all the time is there's no strategy. There's no strategy for the website. There is no strategy for getting traffic to the website. There is no content strategy. There is no ad strategy. There is no strategy whatsoever. They put up a website and they're hoping that somebody's going to reach out to them. And when they do, they have no strategy for a sales process. They have no strategy for a closing process. They have no strategy for follow through and delivery. All of these are so crazy important. If you're struggling with strategy, reach out to a digital marketing agency or a strategist and start to put that together of saying, what do I want my customer experience to look like? Where are they gonna come from? Are they gonna come from Facebook? Are they gonna come from Google? Are they gonna come from paid search or organic search? What is the strategy when they get to my website? Am I just giving them a bunch of information and letting them decide? Or am I putting them down a funnel of saying, hey, if you're new to getting garage doors, cause I'm buying one, you're, are you new to getting a garage door? Start here, here's the guide. These are the different kinds of garage doors. This is how long it takes to get a custom door. All the questions that I would wanna know as a consumer answer those and that strategy will be they came in from an ad or organic they went to the website they followed through the website that little funnel they put in a contact form they got an automated email sequence and then in theory the next day or later that day their phone should be ringing from you with a strategy on what are next steps is it a phone consultation is it an in-person consultation what does that look like for your business and then you can close them and then come up with a strategy for following through and delivering the products and services that you asked for. And I'll give you a little bonus. After that, add to your strategy to ask them for a referral. I promise you, they probably know somebody that is in a similar situation because before people go to the internet, 
they usually start to talk to friends. Hey, I'm looking for a garage door. Do you happen to know anybody? Oh, check out this company. They did a great job for us. Perfect. That gives them a place to start. They probably have talked to a couple people. They probably know somebody that's looking for a similar product or service. Go ask them, add that to your strategy. Do you know anybody else that could use my services? I'd love to help them too. And that's it. Five massive mistakes that most beginners make. I promise you, if you implement all of them, you are going to crush it online compared to your competition who's just starting out. Love you guys. My name is Harrison Barron from Growth Generators. If you guys are interested in joining my newsletter, click the link down below. I provide tons of value on my newsletter and I'm just looking to help you get better and grow online. I'll see you guys later.